Good morning and welcome to the Collective Social Network Live. I'm your host, Erica Graham, and with me this morning is Adam Prime and mm -hmm. Thanks for joining our show. All right. Hey, thanks, Erica. What's the plans for today? Um, today, I think we're going to talk a little bit about um, plastic consumption in our country. And um, I think uh, we're going to discuss Representative Ilan Omar as well. Am I Sounds correct? To me. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, we're going to have Danielle St. Cloud on, hopefully, to discuss Julian Assange. I would love to do that. Oh, yes. And Anthony John Ma Mao may join us as well. Hopefully. Yes, I hope he does. He's, I've seen a couple of his live streams last week, and he seems pretty on point. It would be great to have him on and talk. Super glad you're on, Erica. Missed you last week. Yeah, I apologize for that. <laughs> no worries. Hey, you know, it's going to be like that, I imagine, from here on out. There'll be days that both of us can't make it, but uh, right. we'll be able to, the show must go on and we'll figure it out. It's uh, But it was de it's definitely a little bit more lonely up out the, up here by myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's awesome. We got the new camera. We got the new uh, setup. So things are starting to come out. We got the new intro. Hope you guys new like intro. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming together. So uh, we um, plastic. are we are we set up yet for people to call in with questions or to you know comment? Are are we ready for that? We are somewhat. Cool. Okay, that's last week. Someone commented it, and then Oz chimed it in, and I heard it because I don't see anything here. Um, then again, I could just go to the page to look at it. I never thought about that. But then I'm going to be reading off my screen. I got my other computer here that I'll be reading off the screen. So I don't really see really what's going on. Plus, this computer is really slow. Um, all right. Well, should I should I start off uh, in the meantime while we're waiting for our other guests to hopefully arrive? Sounds good. Uh, with uh, All right. Well, I mean, as, as most of most of our viewers know, plastic consumption has gotten a little bit out of hand um, in the world, not just our country, and um, is mostly ending up in, in our oceans and um, just really having um, a negative impact on our on our overall ecosystem. Um, and, and not obviously it doesn't biodegrade uh, readily or easily. Um, I think maybe some of the newer corn plastics, um, you know, they do, but uh, we're, we're far from um, where we need to be as far as those those are concerned. Um, anyhow, there are um, a lot of places are starting to ban, um, you know, single use plastic. Europe um, has taken the lead on it. And now um, several states in our country are, are following suit. New York, Vermont, California, um, just to name a few. Um, so let me, um, hmm, I guess I'll start. Um, some really cool things have been, um, some really awesome alternatives have been coming from um, coming out of this. Like for instance, um, I, I'll just give you a, a brief uh, summary of a, a man, a Vietnamese man who is making and selling straws out of wild grass found in Mekong, in the Mekong Delta. Um, and so in recent times, plastic straws have been shunned due to its impact on marine animals. Um, one rather innovative solution that has surfaced are straws made out of grass. Uh, in a Facebook video that has since garnered more than 1.5 million views and 27,000 shares, Vietnamese Tran Min Tien shows how he goes about his business of manufacturing grass straws. The straws aren't just made from random weeds, but a specific species of grass from the fields of the Mekong Delta in Vietnam called Leperonia articulata. The sedge grass grows wild in the wetlands of Vietnam and is long with a hollow stem. The straws are packaged into bundles using banana leaves and are very environmentally friendly. So hopefully, you know, we'll see some, we'll see these on the uh, US market sooner than later. I'm sure that they will be uh, appearing in Europe as Europe has banned plastic straws. Ah, 
Wow. Okay. That guy's got some money ahead of him then. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, that's yeah. totally, I mean, that's innovative. That's the market's there. Mean. That is super cool. Those look, they look really badass. <laughs> they look awesome. I have, um, my children and I were just actually in Vermont. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, just my son and myself. We were in Vermont um, in February and um, we're visiting one of our friends opened up a little uh, juice shop and she had metal straws for sale. So we bought a bundle of those and have been using them. Um, oh, those are cool. And that's really great. It's cool. But I also think that, and they come with like a little, um, little brush so you can wash them. You know, oh, you can like the two, it's like great. the nice. <laughs> um, but these straws seem so much cooler. I mean, they're, uh, you know, you use them and after a little bit of time, they're going to break down, throw them in your compost. You know, I, I feel like these, this guy's got it. He's thinking. Yeah, that's pretty genius. Yeah, especially uh, the big controversy of straws. I was, when I was reading this last night, I uh, was going through, you know, different sites looking and we found this video, or I think it might even be in this article. There's a video of the turtle where they pull the straw. I think it is in this article. They pull this straw out of the turtle's nose. I was watching with my kids and they're like jamming up there and they couldn't figure out what they're, they're like. We think it's a worm. It looks like some <laughs> kind of worm and they pull it out and it's a big giant straw. And it's a straw. Yeah. It's a plastic it's, straw up the turtle's nose. Um, here's a, here's another little, I mean, it's kind of, it's very sad. This, this, here's another little blurb I'll give about the sea of plastic that's discovered in the Caribbean, which stretches miles and is choking wildlife. Um, and I'd like to keep our show somewhat up full, but there obviously there's a there's a flip side. So we'll just talk a little bit about the the, the negatives, you know, right. try to dwell on them because there's so much positives happening from it. But um, right. there are photo there's some photos that were taken off an idyllic island that's usually compared to paradise. And in the past few years, the images have been ruined by a quote sea of plastic. Once the waters were clear and icy blue, and now they're congested and filled with pollution. Powers and a dive team pass through the floating trash for nearly five miles. In one area, the sea of plastic was merely two miles wide. Some of the items they found include broken footballs, soda bottles, toothbrushes, and abandoned televisions and shoes. Oh, oh. So, yeah, it's just, um, uh, it's hard to be positive about that one. Yeah, it's hard to be positive about that. But then you have, you know, um, what's there's the uh, organization that I um, I do support. Uh, what is it? Ocean? For, uh, yikes! What is it called now? They make really cool plastic bracelets out of plastic they they harness from the ocean. Um, yikes! No, I'm forgetting what it's called. But uh, but they're actually cleaning. They figured out a way to 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 clean the, the ocean, and they have these giant nets, and they all go out and they they haul in thousands of pounds of trash out of the ocean. Um, nice with their sweeps, yeah, um, nice. which is which is incredible, you know. And then they turn it into, you know, they they take the plastic and reuse as much as they can, recycle the rest, and oh, okay, so it's like they're recycling the ocean plastic, like that type yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, and so then, like, so they make these cool little bracelets, and we have a few of them around um, here. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. That's you know cool. Yeah, you know, and they're, they're inexpensive. It's like $5 a bracelet or something, but it goes for an amazing cause. So it's, you know, it's like buy them up. <laughs> yeah, Spread exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those little trendy things, which is great because the money goes to something good. And I saw, I think, I saw you posted something about them making Nike shoes out of them. Oh, yes. Yes, um, that's I don't cool. Know if I have that in front of me right now, but yeah, I would love. To, yes, Nike is taking um, taking plastic and recycling them into pretty trendy-ish looking shoes, and um, I'm hoping. Actually, it's kind of cute. My uh, birthday's coming up in May, and my daughter couldn't resist um, sharing her secret. She said, "Mom, I have a real, I have this like amazing gift. I'm gonna get you for your birthday. You're really gonna love it." I was like, "Hmm, like what could what could that be?" What and she said, I found these really cool plastic or recycled plastic shoes that I'm going to get you. They're like they're nice. slides or flip-flops or something. And she's like, I think you're really going to love them. Yeah, I know awesome. I will. I will. I will. Sure. If, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let me as well. Oh, um, those are the, pl so that's the plastic. Here's, yeah, here's, here's some images. Um, 
of the plastic. Um, Five miles. It's, it's really. He's. Do they hear you? Um, um, no, yeah, I said there's five miles of plastic going one direction and two miles of plastic going the other direction. Yeah. That's insane. So we yep. got like... Here's some more images. Wow. It's rather heartbreaking. That's the Caribbean. That's terrible. And they said it's only popped up in the last couple of years. So like 10 years ago when, we, when I went down there, my family went down there, none of this was there. Right. This is, I mean, this, this, this whole destruction of our planet's happening in hyperspeed now. It, it is. And I mean, there are the, gar there's the you know, the, the garbage patches, the ocean garbage patches, which have been around for a while, you know, that where the, how the, um, the uh, tides kind of, um, yes. or the currents, rather, the currents kind of, the plastic conglomerates in certain areas, according to the currents. Um, and there's been, you know, actually, there was a kid, a child who came up with a really great idea on cleaning that. Um, I don't have enough information on it to discuss it, but maybe I'll, I'll look into it for next week or whatever. But, um, you know, it's funny that the kids are really trying to like figure out solutions to the to the mess that we're leaving with leaving them with. And it's um, I just I just hope that we can um, you know, move forward in a more uh, with a little bit more consciousness to to the things that are around us. You know, okay, so yeah, we probably don't see whales every day, and we're not thinking that the stuff we're throwing out the window is going to ultimately end up in you know, marine life stomach. We don't, we just don't make the connections, but, yeah. um, you know, we have to, we have to start. Um, yeah, and so hopefully, you know, sharing just things like this, we just have to just raise awareness and, um, you know, be a little bit more respectful, you know, um, and, and put our waste where, where it belongs and yeah. try and reduce our waste. We grew up in an era, you and me grew up in an era where plastic throwing away was normal. It took a long time for me to even get used to the idea of like single use plastic shouldn't be allowed. But when I showed my kids that thing yesterday, my son right away was like, how could, because I was like, you know, I said that, I was like, you know, people didn't understand. And he was right. like, how could people not know plastic's bad? And I was like, well, we didn't know. And he's like, I don't understand how you couldn't know. And I was like, well, we're moving in the right direction then. If we teach our kids that, you know, right into the little early age, plastic's not biodegradable, you shouldn't throw it on the ground, we need to think of alternatives. That concept isn't gonna be so foreign to them that people think, oh my God, oh, grab my pearls because they're banning plastic, you know? Cause that's what I hear around here. I get these hussies out here, everybody getting so up and tight being like, I can't believe the world today and now they're banning straws. <laughs> I know. Straws are idiotic, dude. Wake up. Right. It's like the year 2017. And I mean, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, there, plastic has a put. I mean, there is, there are some really great qualities to, you know, plastic. Right. Exactly. And, and, and especially plastic that we can reuse for a year. You know, it, there yes. are some strengths. However, it's a single use, I think, that we really need to focus on. Single right use now. is the big thing. Because it's right now we're both on computers that probably couldn't be running without the right of plastic. Because we don't even right. have technology to make plastic, hard plastic, like the computers out of the hemp even yet. Mm -hmm. We probably will, and that'll be much better. But, you know, and I, I always think about, like, at the end, if, the, if shit hits the fan and we're in a post-apocalyptic world, I always think, like, Water gallons, you know, water jugs, plastic yes. water jugs will be like gold. People yes, go, yes. Oh, so water so. jugs. Let's like kill people over them and shit. Totally. Except that <laughs> we're they just gonna are have to nice to, the ocean to, have. to find them because they all end, they all end up in the water. Yeah, that's that's the problem. <laughs> so it's not just how we make them; it's also how we use them and dispose have, of them. Right, and reuse them and reuse them so it's waste it's reuse and then the big initial thing should be probably reconstruction we shouldn't be making it out of oil and poly whatever though you know i'm not a scientist but poly whatever the polyethanes and there you go that, that we shouldn't be using those we should be using hemp alternatives or whatever it is right right hmm. cool well, let's see. What Would any, if, if we have any viewers, um, if you have anything you'd like to contribute or comment on or question, please um, feel free. Hey, hey, Oz. Awesome. 
Yes. Sure. Okay, so I would like to um, take a moment to introduce our engineer, Oz, who's been uh, patiently working with us. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Oz. Good morning. Good morning, Good Erica. Morning. Good morning, Adam. I uh, I'm I am your engineer. I'm your engineer in training. I'm doing several shows, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I love the topic. Uh, this is so important these days with our post uh, dystopian uh, horizon before us. We uh, we're trying to do everything to mitigate what's going on with the climate crisis. At least I hope we are. Now let's get everybody else on the planet too. So keep up the good work. I did want to jump in here real quick. I have an article. There's they're making a breakfast cereal now, and it is uh, what you would call sustainable. Now let me zero this shot out a little bit. But uh, the question is, can this breakfast cereal help the planet? Now it's I saw cool. this. Kind of cool, yeah. No, it's kind of cool, and this is from April thirteenth, twenty nineteen. This past week in San Francisco, food writers and environmentalists gathered to taste some breakfast cereal. Everybody think, oh, that's not a big deal. Looks like Wheaties to me, or is it Special K? No, no, Wheaties. <laughs> Wheaties. No. This particular cereal had an ingredient: the milled seeds of a little-known plant called. Kernza, Kernza, I believe is that uh, is what it's called, Kernza, and uh, that's the result of a radical campaign to reinvent agriculture and reverse an environmentally disastrous choice made by our distant ancestors. The campaign began some forty some years ago with a scientist environmentalist named Wes Jackson. He argued. This is a great point, that humanity took a wrong turn thousands of years ago when it came to rely on crops like wheat and rice yeah. for basic right. sustenance. <laughs> that was it. These annual crops need replanting every year, he said, which means that if you're going to get your seed to germinate, you've got to destroy the vegetation at the service, clearing away anything that might compete with fragile seedlings, Jackson said. As farmers use tillage or herbicides to get rid of competing vegetation, I mean, that's killing stuff that's in the natural way of things should be there, okay? But man, man has come in and destroyed the natural uh, sustainable balance of the planet. They inevitably wipe away the habitat for birds and insects. People don't think about that. They're destroying a food chain that uh, is natural and it and it sustains other beings on the planet. We have 200 species dying, going extinct per day. That's kind of shocking. People will say, oh, you're full of shit, Oz. No, it's true. Look it up. Yep. The science is behind it. Yep. But uh, this, to, to cut to the chase, this is a sustainable uh, method of making uh, a sustenance for us. And I'm not saying we're, we're looking at Soylent Green at this point, but we are looking at sustainable ways to uh, help the planet and uh, keep all the other species alive, which in turn help the natural food chain uh, come across. I'm going to fl flash over and get this. I recommend so it. What is, what is the cereal? It's a grain still or no? It's made from a seed. And, okay, so and, it is a grain. And, and the seed is, it's, it's, uh, uh, they, uh, let me see. Let me read a little bit more here. The, uh, the plants don't require reseeding. Their roots go deep into the earth, lie oh. right through, th and they live right through the winter and send up fresh green stems every spring. I mean, uh -huh. that's fantastic. I that mean, is. you don't have to have it die off and reproduce. I mean, it keeps it keeps uh, uh, growing. And uh, the Land Institute believes that we should be getting our staple foods from perennial plants like this. Fruits. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Which, which, is nice. wise, which is wise. I mean, all, all the horses and goats and sheep eat grass. Well, we have the uh, knowledge to make that a lot more palatable. I mean, people have been brought up on the uh, social condition of eating eating beef and 
and meat and we have friends corn, corn. We yeah we we've got friends like uh brian cheeseman he's talked about how factory farming uh, contributes 51 percent of the uh, greenhouse gases you know and it's not just cows farting it's just the whole no, process yeah. right so yeah these uh these perennial plants are are i believe one of the steps to saving our planet and when we save our planet we're saving the species we're saving everything around so we can all live in harmony like we originally meant to be I believe in the grand scheme of things, but that's my little soapbox for this morning. I appreciate you guys letting me in there, and I will. Oh, I awesome. will drop that link uh, into the room if uh, anybody that's watching it live or uh, wants to w watch it later on after they watch the recording of this uh, go forward. And again, it's nice being here. You guys look fantastic. You have the beginnings of a very very good program and just relax and have a good time because that's what everybody wants to do here. I'm going to sit here in the corner and listen. So if you have any questions or <laughs> need me to do anything, just shout at me. Okay. No, that's awesome. That's cereal. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Oz. Sure. I want to learn more about that cereal because I'm big into the grain thing. I'm big into canceling out the grains. I'm uh, having an issue. I'm actually going to, you know, I'm changing my diet again. I am trying to lean towards more of the, vegetarian maybe or it may be going in a closer direction than i have because i've been doing a lot of the key not keto because i've never done keto yet before i even considered going back to vegetarian that i was when i was younger i'm going to have to try keto once keto is um, awesome i've never gone keto now i do it a lot my metabolism is really high so then i started doing the root vegetable diet you know i was just doing all low carb low gi no grains lots of carrots uh, some sweet potatoes. I'm not a big fan of them, but I force myself mm, to eat I, every day. I eat them. Potatoes. Um, and I've been doing a lot more of that. And you know, hard but hard boiled eggs and stuff, and salmon. I don't know. I, I the beans are good, but I, I think it would be hard for me to go back into a diet that's completely vegetarian unless I had better, newer alternatives. And this new grain is a suggestion. I'm learning about the coconut plant. I use um. I use uh, what's the other thing I use? Uh, paleo a lot. Paleo pan. Mm -hmm. Yep, paleo. It's the bread making again, and it's instead of being gluten free bread making because really gluten free isn't much better than gluten. Like if you're taking refined corn and making bread out of refined corn instead of refined wheat, you moved one step slightly in the right direction, but there's not much difference between it because as far as blood sugar levels and stuff go any refined flowers from the seeds send you through the roof you're insulin if you do, even if you don't have, if you don't have diabetes or anything if you eat a bunch of wheat flour your insulin gets produced very quickly in your body and then after your body produces a bunch of insulin your body has to counteract that with a bunch of glycogen and then your body becomes insulin resistant this is for every human being and then you and in, insulin is also our number one hormone that reduces stress. I mean, reduces inflammation. So that's the crazy yes. thing. Insulin reduces inflammation. So when you become insulin resistant, which America is insulin, insulin resistant, the whole damn country, you get inflammation. And inflammation is the key to cancer, all the things, all the autoimmune. That's the, that's the core right there is inflammation. It causes all those problems. I actually stopped eating my oatmeal because of the conversation with you, Adam. Oatmeal. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. Oatmeal is tough because I still have to do the oatmeal sometimes. I get the I loved I loved the, the steel cut oats. I, yeah. I the next day for, and then I started doing um um the overnight so they were not even cooked, the steel cut oats, but I stopped because oh. I felt I think that they were um causing the inflammation basically. Thank you. You're you're schooling me on that topic. Yeah, they do do it, and then the sad thing. Nice, that's but all. I that. to what's so wrong with oatmeal? What's tell me, tell us what's wrong with oatmeal? I uh, I just read something about that. Well, as far as oatmeal with this subject, there's a lot of different things you can look at it. But with this subject, when you're talking about insulin, uh, oatmeal has a GI level a glycemic index. So in the 80s, real quick, I'll say this: in the 80s. A, a scientist, I don't know his name offhand right now, he came up with something called the glycemic index. Right. And it was look, taking every single food and giving it to somebody, a, di a type 1 diabetic or somebody, and seeing how fast they go up. And this was all experimental. 
like how, before, much, how, and, how fast your blood like sugar standard the standard doctor before the 80s was told to tell everybody even my doctors told us when my son had type 1 diabetes uh ten, eight years ago they said sugar is sugar it all acts the same but it's all double speak because they learn that sugar is sugar and it, and they all but they also learn that there's four different sugars right and one is a fructose right. one is a glucose you know and you break it all down there's lactose fructose goes through your liver so if you eat 16 grams of fructose it goes through your liver before it turns into glucose so, but if you eat so, uh, 16 grams of glucose it goes straight into your blood so yeah yeah the osmosis so the wheat flour I mean, not wheat flour, oatmeal, oatmeal. Is, is a grain that's high GI. So it makes your blood sugar spike. So, if, and it's loaded with carbs because it's a, in a little bowl, you're eating probably, you know, 60 carb, grams of carbohydrates in one breakfast, which is probably the worst meal to put carbs in because you just woke up, your body's not even kicking into overdrive at all yet. Wow. So you probably have a slice of salmon or something. Maybe you could do beans. Hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled egg, but I'm thinking if you were going to go vegan, I'm learning more. You could do beans, especially if you cook them yourself. That's They're definitely. super low GI, still a lot of carbs though. Well, I have to, I have what to, about I have to push back quickly, real quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two of the oldest men in the world uh, stated last week uh, they were asked the secret to their longevity, and one of them said, and these these men are 111 years old. Right. The primarily what I got out of it was they said for the remainder of their life, and I'm assuming the last, oh my gosh, 111, the last at least 40 years, they said they'd been eating oats and porridge for the most part. And it kept right. them spry and sharp and everything else. But uh, I, I can see what you're saying about the carbs because this, this epidemic we have of diabetes, and you are absolutely correct, all these uh, lead to different types of cancers and things. So it is, we die by our fork, and that's why we must think about what we put in our pie holes, because you're right. I, and this is great. I Thanks for pointing that out, because well, I... Well, the, the, guy, the, guy, the guy that said that, two, two, two comments on that, is the guy that said that, for one, George Burns said that cigars kept him lived to 100. Yeah, so well, that's see, true, too. Person yeah. and they could, you yeah. could say, hey, it was my whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I drank a shot of whiskey every night. That's yeah. how I lived to be 120. People yeah. do say that. Yeah, well, yeah, you could say anything. Was it partially? Yeah. Or, or, right. And then also, the second aspect of that is everybody's body is different. So yeah, there are definitely true. human beings out there yeah. that can handle a lot more carbohydrates. Yeah. Erica, what were you going to say before I cut you off? I apologize. And back to you. Oh, I was just going to ask about the seed, chia seeds. I ended up switching to chia seeds for the morning um, for my breakfast. Uh, well, actually, multi seeds. I do hemp, chia, and flax seeds in the morning now. Oh, um, good. Okay. And I was curious about that, like if they're what the – what the GI would be for, for that, that, but I mix it with berries too. So there is the fructose and the berries, right? Uh, yeah, but the berries, okay. Of course, fructose is going to be a much slower sugar. It's better to get right. a lot of your fructose uh, sugars from fructose as far as your insulin goes. But the thing is, if you get all of your sugars from fructose, all of your carbs from fructose, I should say, then you could deal with liver problems because then all of your glute, all of your carbs go through your liver and then your liver has to work extra hard. So that's why high fructose corn syrup is dangerous for your liver. So you would say the keto diet is probably something really worth looking at because it causes your body to go into a natural ketosis um, and yes. you're actually eating the stored up bad stuff. It's, it's burning that off. So, Without, you know, uh, the, the keto diet, from what I understand, the doctors recommend that you do have a doctor to go through it with you because you're basically starving yourself to a point where your body starts feeding on all that internal garbage instead of keep packing food in all day and causing weight and diabetes and everything else. But at some point, with Erica, with the keto diet, wouldn't you achieve that balance of nutrition and health that you're looking for just by watching that and following a keto diet? I would think so. I would think so. I mean, I didn't really um, ever uh, follow the keto diet to a T, but I am, I happen to, I think I eat uh, unintentionally. I'm eating like the keto diet anyhow. Right. 
If and then the, the same um, thing with me is the like more I just I ended am. shifting that way. The more I canceled out the foods that were bad for me, all of a sudden I noticed, look, I'm doing the paleo diet by myself. And then I went further and I'm like, you know what? Bananas are causing a little bit of an inflammation problem. Right. So then I have to cut out the bananas. Next thing I know, I'm really close to keto. The only problem is my metabolism is super high. Uh -huh. So I'm losing all this weight, getting real thin in the face. Like I went into a doctor's appointment last year and they wait, I clock, I weighed in at 135 and I was like, you got to weigh me again. And she weighed me again. And I was like, holy shit. I wrestled 135, a freshman in high school. Wow. And I usually weigh about 150, 160, which isn't that much more. But for me, that's a huge yeah, that difference. Is. And yeah, I, and then I was like, what am I going to do? I need more carbohydrates. So I was having issues and I've learned more and more. Now, then I met, started talking with Brian again, and he started inspiring me to be more vegan and started to make me feel bad about eating meat because I was a vegetarian for years. And I do think that, you know, I still believe that it's not about the way you do it. It's the way you do it. Sure. It's not necessarily we have to be vegan to change the world, but sure. we definitely have to change the whole way we're doing everything. No, right. Not, yeah, and the way we process the process, processing. the way we make the foods, the way we sell the foods, distribute, yeah. local is huge. Yeah. You know, right. All that shit. It's a long way to go. No, that, that's yeah. great. I know that the keto takes, it's to kick it off, it's about a 72 hour fast. But after that, you can lead back into, you know, eating a little bit. But one of the things, and I'll get off the keto, uh, is that they say absolutely not one speck of sugar because that'll throw you back uh, and you won't make the progress you need to do. But once you get into the ketosis and you start processing everything properly, your energy is going to get better. Your skin's going to clear up. Your hair's going to grow back. Uh, all, this <laughs> good, uh, all your all your stamina, uh, those things like that. And, and above all, you're going stamina. to proof yourself against the cancers out there that live in the acidic environment that these sugary sodas and these acidic fruit drinks and everything do to yourself it's like you're you're drinking your death again it's it's fork or drink yourself to death in many ways sure but this is yeah. good you guys are really bringing out some great information and discussion on this and and i really appreciate it and i know people who view this uh, probably do too because they're going to check out the keto they're going to check out cheetahs chia seeds keto, yeah yeah and you know? Know, do you know that every time you go i'm pretty sure this hour so when you go to the gym i mean a lot of people aren't aware of this that Keto, we all go into ketos, keto, ketosis every day. Well, not maybe not. Maybe if somebody's overly extra weight, they don't. But anytime you lose any body fat, you've gone into ketosis. If you go to the gym, if you go walk a mile, you're going into ketosis. The only way to lose body fat is through ketosis. So it's not something that we're just putting ourselves into that's unnatural. And the theory behind it, some of these people believe that before man started growing grains, Mm -hmm. that we were actually a creature that was in ketosis for most of the time because we ate Probably. plants we ate, absolutely because yeah. we were you mean when we were hunter gatherers yeah yeah when we were hunter gatherers we were actually in ketosis most of the time Herbivores. all of our energy came from fat yeah and so we started growing yeah. the grains then our body switched and it was a gen it was an evolutionary process that spun things yeah. forward increased our brain size because mass carbohydrates packed into our system and, and we, we stopped moving so much too Got we stopped it. we we came still and we started farming and we started we were, farming we stopped moving around hey and i could use some of that increasing of brain size how do i do that guys <laughs> and i think that the, the theory is that's what happened was we were able to all of a sudden we were able to grow the grains and all of a sudden our body learned how to take carbohydrates and turn them into energy before energy. that we were like dogs and i don't know if this is necessarily true you know, I'm not a scientist, but I'm pretty, pretty sure the dogs and stuff, they take the animal fat and they turn it into, um, they turn it into uh, glucose. And that's what the first thing when I told people, you know, you don't need carbohydrates to live. Most people will say, laugh at me. The doctor laughed at me. And then I talked to her for 10 minutes and she's like, oh, okay, I guess you're right. And she didn't want to admit it, but I was like, no, you need glucose to live, period. That's what we need. Car our body turns carbohydrates into glucose. But our body can also turn fat into glucose because yeah. the cows ate the grass that came from the sun. They turn it into glucose fat. We take the fat, turn it into glucose, and that's how the web was designed. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, now all the pharmaceutical companies are going to be mad at you guys because with all these maladies that people have, uh, if they start shaping up and doing keto things like this, they'll go out of business because we won't need the the stomach pills yeah. and the blood pills and the injections and the pain pills and everything. And the else. insulin. The insulin. Oh, the insulin. You know, insulin. the insulin's the big one. They literally teach the doctors to prescribe medicine that produces a result in more medicine need for more medicine. 19, like the yeah. whole system is designed to right. make the child for type one or the, the type two diabetic right. continually need more insulin. And that's a, that's a horrible racket now. And it, and it preys upon people and it's billions killing them. Yeah. Billions. Yeah. yeah. It, it is the epidemic's extreme. I was a pharmacy tech in 1998 and insulin was about $33, $35 a vial. And it has gone up uh, hundreds of percent. Now it's close to 500 and Lily yeah. and Mylan and Sanofi and all of them are making a bunch off of people and they're killing them. It's, it's, uh-huh. it's, 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 it's and it was sold, the patent was sold yeah. for $1. Yeah. And I, I would hope that you both would consider doing a program on pharmaceuticals and what they are doing to our society and the planet uh, because it's fascinating. We're all uh, in favor of Medicare for all, I believe here, uh, because that's going to help us uh, make our society healthy, whereas uh, insurance companies won't profit off the health and well-being of our, our populace. But that's another topic that ties right. into the eating right. and everything else. I hope you would do that pretty soon. It'd be great. Oh, yeah. I think that would be awesome. And in fact, maybe we could even do that um, next week. We could talk about it. Uh, I'm done. I, I think that, um, you know, part of that whole Medicare for all um, or health care for all is it's um, not just, oh, you're sick. Let me give you a prescription. It's overall health and well-being. Exactly. Yes, yes absolutely. Which is what, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's in completely scary to the pharmaceutical industry and that you know i, I mean it's it, that's that's the last thing that they want no that's yeah. why they're paying so all for us to uh, realize yeah. our own power they're paying out are millions of our health yeah i mean that, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah pay- you're right yeah. they're not gonna like us at all no they're paying <laughs> out millions to representatives to make sure that we don't get a health care for all or a medicare for all they want to keep the for-profit insurance going because that's their gravy train and you're all a bunch of commies yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we're commies, yeah. i just i just want my poor brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers and everybody to have a quality of life that uh, we were led to believe that we were going to have when we were children so that's where we're at right now, i want i was going to bed last night and i was thinking of a way to word and i was like i want a government that works for anybody that wants them the help We've and got yeah, the people fuck out of everybody else's business yeah. if you don't want them. The people, if we, the people, and you don't yeah. want the government near you. I'm all for keeping the government away. I am yeah. not big government, but I'm big government for if you need help. I'm big government for supplying housing and Medicare and uh, you know helping the homeless and helping education, yeah. but only for the poor education. I you know I hey if you want to homeschool your kids or put them in a private school, I'm all for that. Hey Erica, is he passionate about that or what? I know. Yes. <laughs> What were you going to say, I Erica? I love it. I was, I'm so to for it. That it's just the point that it's like, you know, it's like we're all in this. If people, you know, the different sex sectors forget, it's like we are all in this together. Yes. Like, yeah. The better that my, like the, like we're, or, or, or we're only as strong as our weakest link. So it's yeah. like, yeah. the more, like we, the better off we all do, not just the 1% or even the 10%, like. The better off we all do, the like the lower the lower percent, if you will, like yeah. the, the stronger our society will be. That's right. We will all benefit. That's like, national more. security right there. Health. That is national health. security. That's it. Your health exactly. security. It's like yeah. you, we have to help. It like the, the people, security. the weakest people need yeah. our help, and yeah. and we, and it's a selfish way to look at it. We will do better if they do better. It's no, it is. I know, but who cares if you have to look at it the selfish thing? Let's do it. The selfish thing, then, then so be it. Yeah. But so really, be it. Well, what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What Whatever you, way yeah. crosses, you know, it gets someone's attention. Like, but it's like I will, I will do better in my my children will do better if the the weakest percent yeah. like population 
is is doing better. It makes yeah, perfect kids sense. Better, the kids they go to school with yeah. are smarter and healthier. Yep, that's our whole right. country. Do we want right. to live in a country with a bunch of dumb, sick people? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I mean, do we want to get out of it's like all for me mentality and like oh I already do. <laughs> that, that mentality is so outdated. Like yeah. I, I, we just have to. It's it's so it's um. It's just the disinformation so is crushing. Yeah. Like, we it, have to it, open it's... our minds and realize like we will do better. You know, you help your brothers and sisters you will do better for yourself absolutely we, we simple as that yeah, and, we, yeah, and we, we have to stop being so like caught up in our own yeah. minds and doing what we think is just best for just for ourselves you know it's because it's only hurting the entire everybody no absolutely today we have a small fraction of uh the one percent they call them are so greedy mm -hmm. and hell-bent on having everything that the masses suffer and that paradigm's got to change soon right. for all the above reasons yes. you've been talking about. Now. Yeah, it has to be done and it will be done, but they're just biding their time. Right now, they have the money, they control those in power who set our legislation, but that's changing and that's why we have to be thoughtful. Whoever you like, make sure when you vote for them, they actually are going to do something for everybody, which is going to lift up for everybody. everybody. It's going to lift up everybody. So, you know, without getting specifically political on this one you need to think about what these candidates and representatives are talking about when they talk to you and don't sit there and be a bobblehead ask them questions don't let them gaslight you and throw platitudes or we need to have imagination no we need to have action on issues and policies yes. because for i want someone who stands on cables yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that, that, <laughs> that that's very cute, but uh, the time is is nigh for that. We we've got, uh, according to scientists, we've got twelve years, actually eleven now, to mitigate this climate crisis that's going on. If you don't think global warming's happening because you can make snowballs in May, that's the problem. You shouldn't yeah. be able to make snowballs in May. It's about climate. It's not about temperature. So that's another show you guys really need to jump into and. I hope you'll you'll drive me along to uh, to jump on a soapbox once in a while. But this has been a terrific show. You got about fifteen minutes left. What uh, Three, what what do you want to finish up with today? I'm going to jump into here and talk about uh, Ilan Omar. Okay, let me. Uh, my hero, my newest hero in Congress. Yeah, now I've been a fan over. of hers. You know, she did become a Justice Democrat, so she jumped on. She was one of the ones that the Justice Democrats picked up later because they they the brand new Congress selected a bunch of newbies and they stuck with those newbies and then when justice democrats and brand new congress had an issue they split up and one thing that justice democrats did which i wasn't a fan of is they picked up some new people that were bigger names and one of them was like pam keith who i don't think fit the bill but they did pick up ilan omar and she is a rock star and uh, we, I want to talk about some really divisive shit that's happening in our country because we're talking about changing things and rising up and making a difference. And of course, violence is never the answer and it would only make things worse. So we need to figure out a way to do this peacefully, which is going to be very hard to figure out how to do, but the, using our minds is the way to do it. But the one way they can keep it from happening is to keep us all separated. And one thing that honestly the right and the left do agree on is that the government's out of hand. And that's why we got represent us. And I'm a big part of represent us because they're throwing out the parties and we're talking about corruption. And you don't even ask what party people are in. You just talk about corruption. And as long as they keep sowing discourse, I mean, uh, between us and division, we're going to be in trouble. So last week on April 6th, a New York man was charged with threatening to assault and kill represent Ilan Omar. The New York man is in custody, and this is on this was on the sixth after being arrested and charged with threatening to assault and murder Ilan Omar. Patrick W. Carlino, a 55 Addison, New York, threatened her, and I'll move a little bit forward. Um, he called her during the call and he said to a staff member, Do you work for the Muslim Brotherhood? Why are you working for? her she's an explicit terrorist i'll put a bullet in her head okay right after and that's from abc news the next day after he said that uh, uh he, trump came out and trump thought it'd be funny to slip omar's name into a speech 
to a group of Republicans who are in support of Israel, because a while back she spoke about Israel and I'm all behind her on that one. Someone needs to speak up about Israel. So that's another subject, but Trump said special thanks to Re Representative Omar from Minnesota, Bloomberg, Bloomberg reports. Oh, I forgot, she doesn't like Israel. I forgot, I'm so sorry. They all laughed, that's from the root. So then we got on the 14th. So she comes out the next day on March 9th. This, this uh, article is from the 13th, but it says a 20 minute speech at the Council of the American Islamic Relations Banquet on March 9th, the Congresswoman urged Muslim Americans to stand up for their rights in the face of increasing harassment and threats to their safety since 911. Far too long we've lived with the discomfort of being second class citizen. And frankly, I'm tired of it. And every single Muslim in this country should be tired of it, she said in the speech. CR, that's C A I R, was founded after 9 11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Now, while Omar didn't misspoke, uh, she misspoke about CFAR's history, the group was formed in 1994, though its membership jumped after 9 11. Her argument that Muslim Americans have faced increasing suspicion is backed by plenty of evidence. I mean, most people know that this is happening. It's hate. The final of the story is on Friday, Trump tweeted, we will never forget, along with a video, which is of unknown origin. And the video featured the Minnesota Demo Democrats saying CIFAR was founded after 911 because they recognized some people did something. And then the footage from the news, including CBS News and 60 Minutes of the September 11th terrorist attacks. And it repeats, some people did something. Some people did something. And it repeats it throughout. And then it ends with the words, September 11th, 2001, we will remember. Trump later pinned it to the top of his profile. Wow. It's disgusting. It's like terrible. So like, this is not good. <laughs> people are, he's totally starting a problem that shouldn't be, and it's something that we were thinking we were fading away from. And all she's doing is trying to defend innocent Muslim people. Now, I'm gonna let you guys talk real quick and both say your pieces on this, but I wanna say my little piece here is what I thought of is, so all the Muslims in this country are not responsible for what a small group of elite leaders have, who have hijacked the Muslim religion did because if you want to say that everybody that's a muslim is to blame for 9 11 that would be the same thing as saying all catholics should be blamed for the most giant global pedophile ring in human history now i don't blame all catholics for all the little boys that got raped but because i understand that Catholics were just children born into a Catholic family and they grew up believing mom and dad were right and they believed what they were told. We all raised in our environment. So to blame innocent people that are raised in the Muslim community and to put this other event on them is just ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I agree with you completely. It's a cop out. It's an easy, it's an easy, it's an easy way to, to to continue uh, racism, or yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe it's not race, but or whatever. religionism. Yeah. I don't and know what ethnic, you ethnicism or religion. ethnicism because that's all bind in one with the Muslim thing. It's like Jewish. Yeah, you know? right, right. Which is even sadder it's so, it's so easy. It's an easy way to stereotype. It's thought, and you know, it doesn't take much uh, brain power. I don't really, I don't know. I mean, I, aside from what you've just shared right now, I don't have a lot to, to share on the, on the, the topic yet. I've been paying attention a little bit and it's um, going to get worse. Like, I and that there's, this is there, going it is to a very divisive, uh, a divisive topic. Um, I fully agree with what you just said though. I mean, you can't, I, I what you just said, I mean, it is, is perfect, but as far as, I mean, I have heard some, um, conflicting information and it might not even be accurate um, about her and um 
should I play devil's advocate for a moment or sure, no? Sure, that's what we do. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> okay, so I mean, one thing, one argument is that, or, or that she um, apparently um, does not, she condones the stoning to death of homosexuals. Is that is that even true? Is that that's like something that's been out there and been talked no, about? They're going to say, see that? No, I know. Okay, does she personally condone that? I highly, highly doubt that. I would have to see something where she said, "I condone um, stoning sex, uh, uh, gay people, whatever you want to say," because someone's probably trying to say her religion does. But then all the Catholics are to blame too for the same thing because it for says sure. in the Catholic Bible that we should hang all the you know, any homosexual, right, right. She, so would, she wouldn't means, have got elected if that was the case. I mean, this, this, this whole thing, you know, they they go after Tulsi for her past positions on right, which was really and, it was and hard to get past. I almost fell for all that. Right, though. right, and you know, she was she was brought up in a very conservative, religiously conservative family on things, and they just didn't do it. But at Tulsi. You know, uh, six years ago, she decried it, uh, that she was wrong and she felt, you know, remorseful over it. And she's changed how she her views and she's for it now. She's uh, she's seen the light. I mean, how many times ask yourselves, how many times in your own lives have you been biased or racial against somebody else because of how you were raised? I mean, that's oh, part of the yeah. development. It's of, always how you yeah, raised. Yeah, it's part of, part of your mental and emotional development. I mean, you don't get popped out of the womb and know everything. You've got to learn it. And sometimes those lessons are extremely hard. And, and I have to say, for them to pile up on, on Tulsi, and then I'll get to the Omar, is look at Hillary Clinton. I mean, Bill and Hillary Clinton were against, uh, you know, <laughs> the LGBT community right. up until, I think, 2013. So, you know, the, the hypocrisy is, is huge. But what, 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 what we see here with the Ilan Omar is, and this is horrible for a president of the United States to help propagate this this direct attack, uh, falsely accusing or uh, connecting Ilan Omar with uh, with terrorist activity, it makes me sick. And it is so uh, horrible of a president of our country to be a accomplice in that. You know, say what you like about him and uh, or dislike or anything else. This is just damn wrong, President Trump. You shouldn't be doing this. You know better. But uh, it, it's just really sad. Uh, Does he know better? Yeah. <laughs> well, he should. No. You, you know. It just needs to be his like mo. Yeah, yeah I, mean. I know. I and I still, you know, I still credit with everybody with being a human being. But at the same time, that's that learning process again. Did you learn to be good or not? You know, you learned everything you needed to know in kindergarten, and a lot of people forgot that. You know, how to yeah. treat your neighbor, the golden rule and everything else. But this is a, abhorrent. The last thing on this, Ilar Omar, I'm very disappointed in the Democratic leadership for not jumping in there with more stern and strong rebuttals to all of this. I mean, they've they've done it a little bit and they might today, since it's Sunday morning and they've got to get out there, they might come out a little stronger. But this is just totally uh, it's despicable what they've done. They're basically letting them advocate uh, by association uh, uh, pain and suffering, if not murder, on one of our sitting representatives. I mean, what has this country come to? You know, right. we, we don't have the moral compass anymore with this kind of crap going on. So I stand uh, absolutely with Representative Ilan Omar and all of those who speak out, Rokana, AOC, I mean, all the people. Let's just think about being our humanity for a minute. If that was your sister or your brother, would you stand by and not say anything? Because we're all sisters and brothers on this planet. Yeah. Yeah, Bernie Sanders did talk. He said, Olin Armar is a leader with strength and courage. She won't back down to Trump's racism and hate, and neither will we. The disgusting and dangerous attacks against her must end. Did he say that this morning? No, he said that yesterday. Good. I'm awesome. glad because they're, they're, he was getting criticized for not speaking out for on that For not saying issue. anything, yeah. 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 He's getting a lot of shit for the uh, Assange, but I, I think I'm thinking he's making a good decision there. Yeah, personally. yeah. And I, I'm hoping that we hear something with uh, Julian Assange uh, today because he can't hold it too much longer. I understand the politics behind it, but politics be damned. This is a direct attack on journalists and uh 
government, uh, some sort of a shadow government takeover with the CIA by by doing this to Assange. He did yeah. nothing. I don't he think did. Bernie's going to say anything. Well, I, ho I hope he does. Right, when you say CIA, you know, yeah. they, they got Bernie a little bit there. But that's OK. Yeah. Uh, I love Bernie and let him do what he If he can't say a couple things in order to become president, in my opinion, hold your tongue get in there well guys. yeah and that's that's another discussion for another time too and i i, I agree with that to a point but uh but this, it's a tough one yeah, this um, is this is really hard i um i hate to interrupt but we are getting close to the uh yes. hour here yes. and i'd like to um um just thank both of you guys for all of your um awesome input this morning and um and Oz, thank you for your uh, suggestions for for other topics. I oh, think yeah, that you guys um, are great. Definitely yeah, you consider guys are doing great. the Medicare for you know talking about healthcare and um, and uh, pharmaceuticals. Those are awesome, awesome topics. Um, and I'd also like to thank anyone who's uh, watched us this morning. Um, any support that we receive is really greatly appreciated. And um, feedback. Um, we really welcome feedback as this is like a new endeavor for us, um, and we um, we're open to to suggestions and on um, ways that we can improve, and um, and also uh, if you're interested in participating, just send one of us an email. We'd love to to have um, anybody um, you know opposing views are welcome. Um, we're not yeah. afraid of a little. Uh, respectful deb debate right <laughs> so uh um with that i'd just like to thank you guys again and i'm i'm gonna um i look forward to next week me too thank you guys thanks for coming on erica i appreciate that i appreciate Air uh, oz everything you've doing for both of us uh me and her just getting it started um next week we'll have another good programs lined up maybe a couple more guests in line it's early, so sometimes people can't make it. Totally understand. Maybe we'll get them on next week. Um, yeah. Oh, and one we, more thing, we are we are coming out with some swag here, right? Like yes, today. we're coming out with some so. gear real soon, and we're gonna have it, and we would love people to buy it. Oh, and then please, right now, what you could do for us, smash that like button because we need to yes. get some algorithms cranking. That would help out so much. Hey, if you make it to the end and you're hearing this now, comment, I made it to the end. I made it to the end. I don't know if anybody's making it to the end yet, yeah. but hey. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys rock. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. You and, too. Uh, peace. Peace.